Welcome back to Snapbolt, and today I got one of my favorite decks of all time, probably a deck that I've played more than any other deck in all of Magic. Yeah, this is a modern league for you here. This is Mono Green Tron, and uh, our list is fairly stock. Uh, we can just go over a couple things. Basically, we're we're just trying to Tron quickly. Uh, most people I think should know the deck, so I'm not really going to spend any time at all on the deck tech. We're just trying to cast like T3 Karn Liberated, Worm Coil Engines, and that sort of thing. But I will go over it a, a tiny bit. I am playing Karn the Great Creator. I think this card is insane. I think it's a mistake to not play it. Playing three Oblivion Stone as well. Uh, a couple Ugins. And I do like four Worm Coil um, main. I think that's a good place to be. I'm trying triple Walking Ballista. Some people are on like two or zero. Um, but I'm just going for a little bit heavier on the walking ballistas, not playing anything like Thrag. I've just been like unimpressed with that. Um, and then uh, two Ulamogs, no Emrakul the Promised End. I just like the double Ulamog. Two Ugins. Um, and another thing uh, is I've tested out a little bit just playing Once Upon a Time in Tron it, because it can like help find the Tron lands or it can find like some of your threats. But the problem is, like, you want to be playing, I think, Great Creator, Karn Liberated, and Ugin. So most of, like, pretty, basically all these best threats, Once Upon a Time doesn't find them because it just finds creatures or lands. So if you're, like, cutting Karn the Great Creator or something, or cutting Karn Liberated to play more creatures and play Once Upon a Time, then you're, like, making your deck worse by doing that. Um, but I'll go over the sideboard real quick and then we'll get to some matches. Our wish board just has a bunch of random graveyard hate, just depending on the situation. Uh, Crypt, Graft Digger's Cage, and Relic. And then Wickle Metal Coding. At first I thought Tron didn't want this card, but I think it definitely does. If you're in so many different situations where you don't think you can resolve Lattice, this is like the best thing to get. Just because it puts so much pressure on them to force them to do something. Uh, Ensnaring Bridge, this is a must. You have to have this card. Just Karn into Ensnaring Bridge can win you a lot of games. Mystic Forge is a new one I'm trying out against Control. Just Karn for Mystic Forge and just win that way. Um, of course, we have Lattice, and I like a Trinisphere. And then we have a couple Veils, a couple Nature's Claims, and a couple Weather the Storms. Just good green cards in the board. And that's the list. I'll see you in round one. All right, welcome to round one. We're against Django, Reality Sculptor. And uh, I think we have a Mulligan. Without the London Mullion, this used to potentially be a keep. Like we have a chromatic star and a map. So we have like we can like buy some time, but with the London Mulligan rule, I think you just want to mulligan hands like this. You just want to be T3 troning. So we're gonna mulligan. This has zero tron lands, which generally is a mulligan as well. You want to mulligan a lot with this deck. Um <clears throat> I mean, we have Ancient Stirrings, but with zero Tron lands, like, we're not really doing anything that powerful. Yeah, we have Map, we have Stirrings, but, like, at best, this would be a T4 Tron, and I would much rather just go to 5 and try to T3 Tron. Hmm. This isn't great, but I think on 5, I have to keep. I could just go down to 4, but we have Mine into Sphere and then into Sylvan's Grind. So, in the first couple draws, first two draws, if we draw one of the other Tron lands, we can scry for the third one in T3 Karn. So I'm going to keep this, and I have to put two cards on the bottom. I could put Forest Forest on the bottom. I don't think I really need these. Let's, let's go with that. This version of the deck needs Forest like a lot less than the other ones, because your only green cards are four Sylvan Scry and four Ancient Stirrings. So you really, like, don't need forest at the beginning of the game generally you can just rely on like one sphere or one uh, star and just go with that Let's see what we're up against okay there's a map oh my god <laughs> I needed to keep one of the forests I just don't know what I was thinking wow well I'm gonna lead on sphere that might have just cost me the game I mean Definitely should have put back Walking Ballista there. Wow. Just embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. I mean, hopefully we get lucky and don't get punished. We'll see. It's like a Dark Confidant. 
collective brutality. So we can take our Sylvan Scrying, and then he can drain for two. What is this? Yeah, so this returns from the graveyard to the battlefield. Put an aura card with converted mana cost X or less from your hand onto the battlefield attached to it. From your hand. Yeah, so for two mana, he can return it from his graveyard to the battlefield. And then he can make a big Ever Strike, or he, Ever Shriek, or he could just get a 2 2 flying. I'm not sure, but interesting. So he takes our Sylvan Scrying. Man, not having that forest is just so brutal, regardless of him taking Sylvan Scrying. Let's hope to get lucky here. Walking Ballista, that's not a good draw. Just add green, draw. If I don't hit land, I just play map. I'm just going to play map over star there. Because if we just draw another Tron land, then we can just get Tron online. He just, oh, he can return this at any time. Of course, we get punished for also not playing Star. This is just like making me look so bad. I mean, I made a huge mistake by not keeping Forest, but still. And it basically has Lifelink, so we made a 4 4 Lifelink. And the Inquisitions away our stirrings. Okay. I mean, this is a 4 4 flying lifelink isn't that good against us. Like, we don't really care about that. There we go. Okay, so now I have Karn next turn. I can just Karn away his Ever Shriek. So, even though I played horribly, I might get bailed out. The classic uh, Tron player. <laughs> I'm going to try to clean it up moving forward. That is just, was just awful. Trophy, the tower. Okay. That obviously stops us. So I can just tap two and get another tower. I don't think there's any real reason to. I think I just can let this happen. I'll just I can just float one, but yeah, I don't I don't think I need to uh try to crack. Is there any reason to? I don't think so. I'm just going to wait. I think I will crack map end of turn though. Okay, so he can. He's a 6 6 now, so we got a 3 turn clock. So the clock is real. Yeah, with the opening hand, I was thinking, okay, like, you got to keep two two lands, and then I was just like, oh, I can bottom both these fours for some reason. Okay, now he kills us next turn, so I think we're dead now. Because of the double collective brutality drain. Wow, I mean, his deck seems pretty bad, but I guess we just didn't function. I feel like I should have won this game. Alright, we can't get Tron online, so there's nothing we can do. But that, again, was just so embarrassing. I don't even know if we want Claim to kill like an artifact or enchantment there. I think we just want Veil of Summer. We can take out like a Walking Ballista, maybe even just two Walking Ballistas. Can cut a Sylvan Scrying, but I like to do that when like it's like a faster matchup. You can just cut double Walking Ballista, just go down to one. If it doesn't really have stuff to kill early, it's it's not as impressive. Let's try it like this. All right, let's play first. We have zero lands, small. Gonna mull this too. Gonna go down to five. All right, well we keep this. Now let's not, let's not mess this up. So I have to put two cards on the bottom. I think it's Blast Zone and then one of the Mines. Keep these threats. 
yeah, let's do it. Blast zone, one of the mines. And then we can go mine, play map. You could have like a nature's claim or something to kill the map here. But if you can't kill a map, um, then we're going to get Tron online. And if he has a Thoughtseize, he can take either of our threats. So as long as he doesn't have like T1 Thoughtseize, T2 Thoughtseize. But even if he does, we still have Tron online. So. I mean, Tron mulligans a lot. You want to really find the T3 Tron hands. Okay, there's Thoughtseize. I'm assuming he's going to take Worm Coil here. He does. So he needs another Thoughtseize effect to take this Walking Ballista. Oh, there's another Worm Coil. Even better. Just going to pass the turn, plan on getting Tower. Oh, no. What hand did our opponent keep? I mean, if we lost to the Evershriek deck, I'd be pretty embarrassed. I mean, we still have to win the third game, but I think that's just not a good deck. It's, it, which, I mean, my guess is it's just not a good deck. Tron should have a really good matchup against that deck. Might have Liliana the Veil. Two mana, so he can probably uh, cast another Collective Brutality here. Which I'm assuming is going to be his play. Damping Sphere. Okay. So now I'm just going to attack, and then... I could leave up Veil of Summer, but I can also just Ballista for two. I'm just going to Ballista for two this turn. I mean, we're hitting him down to 9 here, so adding another threat is, is relevant. I think that's better than leaving up uh, than leaving up Veil. Because this way, yeah, he can like k potentially kill our Worm Coil, but Black Green usually doesn't have great answers to Worm Coil. Like, I don't think he there's, he's going to have any way to exile it. And if he just kills Worm Coil, we still have Lethal on board. So I'd rather just play Ballista, have Lethal, and then next turn, leave up Veil. Alright, well there's a Forest. It's actually good. So we could like Trophy the Worm Coil here, in which case I'll just Veil. Fine to show it to him just to get the win. And he concedes. A little turn five win there. And maybe we want nature's claim. Now that we saw a damping sphere, he probably has like up to four of them. I could just bring in two claims. Now, now that I saw the damping sphere, because he's gonna have uh, enchantments for his ever shrieks and the damping sphere so i think i want all the nature's claims now i can side out a scrying hmm I can side out an ulamog but that seems fine as well I'm not sure what to side out i mean obviously i've never played this matchup sometimes i like to side out one stirrings but that just seems wrong I mean, maybe O-Stone's just better than Ugin, because it's easier to use through Damping Sphere. Cut like one Ugin. can even cut a Karn Liberated, but I think I just cut an Ulamog. I don't think we need the double Ulamog to win. I'd rather just have more interaction. So let's see if we can not Mulligan to five here. Yeah, again, really don't want to lose to the Ever Shriek deck. <laughs> hmm. We have a Veil. But we're also on the draw, and we only have Mine. He mulligans to six. I'm gonna mulligan. I think we can. I think we want to like again find Tron. Hmm. 
this time I'll keep this hand. It is kind of awkward too, but we have map, we have claim, we have one Tron piece. <sighs> he kept six. If he goes Thoughtseize, take map, then we're just stuck actually. I'm going to Logan one more time. Let's just be aggressive. And this is, this is what I'm talking about. All right. Let's keep. Put two cards on the bottom. Definitely Ancient Stirrings. We don't have a green source. And I think map. Because we already have Tron. And I, he, it's, I think it's kind of hard for him to disrupt that. Hmm. Actually. If, I, if he goes T1 Thoughtseize, which he's like to do, likely to do, he's not going to take map anyway. He's going to take one of our threats. So if I put a threat back, then I'm it's possible I just don't draw a threat. The only thing keeping map is better against Assassin's Trophy. But I still think I put it on the bottom. Alright. Looks nice just to have that staring back at you. But we did mull into five every game here. Still think Oh, there's no way to really play around that, but that's fine. Just gonna lead on mine, pass the turn. Now he might thought seize the great creator away. We're immune from collective brutality duress here. Alright, there's damping sphere. Well we can uh blast zone that eventually. There's no point to do it now. I'm gonna wanna play blast zone next turn. So I'm just going to play a star, pass the turn. Let me read this one more time. Each spell a player cast costs one more for each other spell that player has cast this turn. So if I cast a spell, his spells don't cost one more. So I just wanted to double check. I'm not going to draw a card right now for sure. Now I just play Blast Zone. Pass the turn, plan on putting a counter on it. But I don't even necessarily need to crack Blast Zone yet. I can always just play Karn the Great Creator as well. Although, killing Damning Sphere end of turn does seem pretty appealing to me. On the end of my next turn, because I have to charge this and then play a third, a, a, a fourth land, and then on the end of his turn, crack and kill Damning Sphere. Put one charge counter on Blast Zone. He can trophy it. But now he can't really. So I'm just going to play the Tron, pass the turn. I'm planning on just killing Damping Sphere. Then I'll just have Tron into Great Creator. And I can probably just get Liquid Metal Coating. Can also potentially get Mystic Forge or. We'll see. Ashiok. I can't search my library. That's fine. Just gonna still crack Blast Zone. I don't care about Ashiok. See what he got. Okay, just some some random stuff. That's fine. Ashiok, huh? Kill his damping sphere, untap. Ooh, there's a ancient stirrings. Maybe I just lead on that, because then I can still Karn into. Uh, I can still Karn into damping sphere. I mean, <laughs> Karn into uh, liquid metal coating. Let's just start by drawing a card, adding a green mana, seeing what happens. There's another sphere, that's Ancient Stirrings. There's an Ulamog. Wonder if I just want to get Worm Coil down here. Is that better than Great Creator? I feel like it is. I just don't think Black Green has that many answers to a Worm Coil. And I have 
plenty of mana to cast it. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to Worm Coil. I'm just going to Sphere and not crack right now, too, to play around Thought Seizes. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather just drop a Worm than a Greek Creator here. Because if I Great Creator and then he, like, trophies Tron and then somehow trophies Great Creator does something weird like that, I could see how he could get back into it. But I think his deck just, like, I just don't know if it can beat Worm Coil. I just, like, what can he do? He can just, like, Maelstrom Pulse it and then, like, or, like, trophy it and then maelstrom pulls the tokens or something like that but i just i mean like yeah that stood on the stack for so long probably because he's like oh crap like how do i actually beat a worm coil i'm feeling like we got this with a worm coil down it's not over yet he could have some weird planeswalker i'm not thinking of maybe a liliana into something else but Whoa, whoa, Noose Constrictor as a discard outlet. Okay, got one of our Karns. Another great creator. Just going to start by drawing a card here. Another star. Okay, now I just want to go great creator. Hmm. And he just concedes to it. I mean, I was just in the tank. I wasn't exactly sure what we were going to get. But I could get Liquid Metal Coating. I could get Ensnaring Bridge. I could even get Trinisphere. I could get... I could just plus Karn. So, like, if I go plus Karn, play Chromatic Star, I think that's going to be a win, too. I could even play star and then plus card and target star to have another chump walker. Which that, that actually looked like a kind of cool line. So again, sorry for the uh, horrible misplay in, in game one, but I'm going to try to clean it up and let's see if we can uh, get a second win. I'll see you in round two. All right, welcome to round two. We're against KMAC90. And we have two out of the three Tron pieces. We're on the draw. Uh, this is a hand I have, like, I mulliganed hands like this, but I'm going to try it. Looks like we're up against Scred Red, most likely. Relic doesn't do anything against us. Ulamog, that's not a good draw. I'm going to play Power Plant Star. A small detail is you always want to play Tower last if you can, for the fact sometimes you need to tap your other lands, and then Tower is your third Tron land, uh, so you get more mana that way, so it's just... Better to save tower in your hand if you can. Okay, there's Ancient Stirrings. That was one of the best draws we could have had. So now we just need to hit mine. We have six chances, a draw from star and a look on stirrings. Walking Ballista. Play stirrings. We miss hard. So I just get sphere. So we don't need any more threats. And I'm actually going to play Star, even though it, it shows him that we still have Sphere in hand. Just because he could play a Braid in his deck. He just draws a card. So now we need to find a Sylvan Scrying. I guess a map does it too. We can just draw mine. We know that there's five... Four other cards. Ooh. Sarkhan. Okay. He can just play a dragon next turn. Yeah, modern's cool. I mean, we're playing against just two like, completely random decks here. Let's see if we can hit. There's a tower. Alright, let's add a green and draw... There it is, nice. So now I can, I have a couple options. I can play a Ballista on three. Can't play a Karn Liberated. I can play a Karn the Great Creator 
and then also minus and get liquid metal coating and play it. Yeah, that seems like the that seems like the line. That seems insane. Then Karn can get bolted. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's not the line. I mean, Ballista on three is not bad. All right, let's just go Ballista. Just because uh, it plays around Lightning Bolt a little bit better. I don't know if he's the Chalice version or not, and he sh has Scrat already, so he could easily have a Bolt in hand. Let's just Ballista on three, pass the turn. So we hit just in time, I think. We can just Ulamog next turn, so we're likely just fine anyway. This seems like a good matchup for us. I guess he could have Blood Moon, but... Scred Red usually plays Blood Moon, right? They should. Like, why else are you want to be Mono Red? Okay, discarding another Scred. Does he have a third one for this Ballista or a Bolt? Yeah, I'm just going to slam Olamog next turn. I mean, I can... Start, I can just deal 3 damage to this Sarkon because I don't think I need to uh, deal him 3 damage. I don't think like that does anything. Like I'm going to win by like Ulamog exiling his library or Karn exiling his permanents. Like, Tron, you really need to do damage to them. You can often win just by, like like I said, these triggers or Karn the Great Creator. Like, you're not really concerned with their life total. Like if they're like Malira combo or something and they go gain infinite, you should just be like, sure. Anything else? Like what what do you got? But no blood moon. Just gonna go Ulamog here. I could have gone Karn Microsynthalize, but I think this is just a lot better. Just exile a couple things. Still think it was better just shoot the Sark on there, even though we were planning to cast Ulamog. What did he reveal? He, so he revealed Mountain. So Scrying Sheets, just review, look at the top card. If it's Snow, reveal it and put it into your hand. So he has this Mountain in hand. But I would assume he's dead. I'm going to bring in the Nature's Claims. That's probably it. Seeing, seeing the Sarkon makes me think like he has like either something like, I don't know, just some of the five mana dragons with haste. Maybe the new one that deals four damage to a creature, maybe even Storm Breath Dragon they have sometimes, or who knows. Let's just bring in these claims. Ballista was okay there. Can still cut one Ballista. Could even just go down two. It's good against Planeswalkers, though. Don't think I'm going to need Ulamog to win. Great Creator's a little fragile. Still pretty good, though. Decide if I need if I want O Stone. Just cut one O Stone. He's not really going wide or anything. Like I can just deal with random permanents like Karn or just stuff like that. Let's try it like this. Go game two. Sweet. Sand looks great. No threat, but we have Tron, so we're keeping. We Our deck is full of threats to draw into, and we can draw an extra card off Sphere. So we're just going to... Uh, you know, this is one example I was just saying in the last game. Like, you want to like keep Tower in hand, but sometimes when you have like double Tower, it can be good just to run it out. Um, 
because if they just do something like go score to you like in a panic mode or something like you don't just like you want to like play ones that you have two of i think more often all right i'm just gonna go tower map he might be able to abrade it but if he does then we can t3 sylvan scrying here all right he doesn't so now i just go power plant pass We still don't have a threat till T4, so we could go Blood Moon here. Scrying Sheets, Blood Moon? Nope. Crack Map, get mine. And then we can go like Sphere into Stirrings. Mine. Untap. I'm actually just gonna cast use tower, play sphere, play stirrings. The reason I tap tower is because after the stirrings, then I can uh, just cast another sphere. Now I only have six mana, so we just drew into this a little bit too late as well. That's fine. I'm just gonna go stirrings. Um. I guess I could just get Ulamog. If I can cast it next turn. Then I go Sphere. And then I crack it. Draw. And I'll probably just. Hmm. Could also just play Oblivion Stone now. Is that better than Scrying? I don't know if it matters. I think it is. I'm just gonna play Oblivion Stone. Save the Scrying in hand in case he like messes with our mana somehow. Pass the turn. Abrades it. It's totally fine. Wonder if he had the abrade for the map, or if he just drew a braid. I mean, if he had a braid for map, he 100% needed to abrade the map. There's no question. He said, "Ugh, oh, I needed to draw a moon here." Oh well. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was scared of. I mean, I was talking about it. Sark. Yeah, Sarkhan. Now I just T4 Olamog two games in a row, so it's pretty brutal for him. Just cast Olamog again. Same targets. Now if he Blood Moons, it's too late. Haven't seen it. Either game is a loss for me. Yeah, GG's. All right, 2-0 with Tron, even after a bad misplaying game in uh, round one, and I'll see you in round three. Welcome to round three. We're in the 2-0 bracket against Moloch, and this is a mulligan, zero Tron lands. Like, you want to see a lot of Tron lands staring back at you, so I'm in a mulligan. Ugh. I think this is a mulligan as well. Like, if we drew another Tron land, yeah, we have T3 Tron, but, excuse me, I don't think we can risk that. Let's just go to five. All right, we're going to four. This is awful. I wonder if I keep this on four. Like, what am I keeping? Keeping, like, Power Plant, Spear, Stirrings, Karn? I wonder if going to three is better and just trying to find Natron. Because this likely isn't doing much. A T1, get to play Power Plant, play Sphere. T2, crack it, play Stirrings. I'm going to keep this. I don't love it. But... It's what it's kind of what we were dealt. I don't think any of those hands were good, so this time I'm actually fine with my mulligan decisions. Delver, interesting. Wonder if he goes force negation on this chromatic sphere. 
That would be pretty insane. And if he forces up negations this ancient starting, we probably just lose too, so. Deprive. Oh god. Yeah, that'll do it too. We have to like nat draw Tron here. Add green. Draw. Stirrings. See if he deprives it. I mean, he should. He 100% should. He does. And then we just play star. Actually, not a bad draw just because it can kind of keep the cards flowing a little bit. But we mulligan to four, and then our opponent on the play went T1 Delver Flip. Okay. That's a start. Is that a green draw? Okay. Mine off the top. How about that? I'm sure he has another counter spell, but I'll probably just slam Worm Coil on my next turn. Bolt us. Okay. Might not even have time for that. I wouldn't want to play Karn just because of Force Negation, but... Okay, there's Chromatic Star. Is he going to counter it? No. Green draw. Sanctum. It's not going to do it. I mean, this happens with Tron a lot too, where you just like, you mulligan and then you don't hit. Which is one reason why I like Once Upon a Time. Okay, there's a map. Still can't cast anything this turn. I mean, he's probably just going to counter this map, honestly. Guess not. I think we're dead, though. If he just bolts us here, we, we're dead, so... Because we can't even cast uh, Worm Coil this turn. Just feeling like the bolt is coming in here. Now Worm Coil doesn't even save us. Draw two, okay. So we're not dead yet. Can't cast anything. I have to cast Karn though. Because if I just cast Worm Coil, he just attacks for three in the air. So I have to resolve Karn against four blue mana. <laughs> I'm sure he has either Charm, Cryptic, you know, Deprive, Reman, just anything. Snap Bolt on Upkeep. Sure. I think this matchup's reasonable for us, though. Let's bring in these Veils. I think that's all we want. I mean... Could weather the storm be decent? Maybe even claim. Maybe even bring in like two claims because he might have like. He's probably going to bring in either uh, Blood Moon or. Uh, what's the one mana one? Alpine Moon. I think he'll bring in one of those. Let's side out like O Stone. Great Creator seems a little slow as well. I think I like my other threats better than that. Omog, the thing is, like, it plays around counter as well, so maybe I leave those in. Never really sided out Great Creator, but maybe this is a matchup for it to side it out. Hmm. Just take out, like, two of them. They do just seem a little bit awkward. Like, again, these other threats I think are better. And maybe a Sylvan Scrying as well. Alright, let's go with this. I like it. Let's go first. Yeah, this is a mulligan. I mean, we're just like close, but we're just not getting there. Like, all we can do is T1 map and then nothing else. Literally nothing. So we have to mulligan. Alright, this is a keep. This is a T3 Tron. I think I'm putting back a tower. I could also put back a green card. 
I like putting back tower, I think, though, because if he counters this scrying, I'd rather like just have a stirring sitting around in my hand until I find another green source. I think then a second tower. It's kind of close. Yeah, I'll keep the stirrings. And then we'll just go mine, sphere, pass, plan on scrying on T2. Which he could have a force for. Delver. Let's add green draw. Tower. Scrying. Doesn't have a force, that's huge. Power plant. Alright, I'm just gonna slam warm coil next turn, I think. Serum visions. He casts it, wow. I mean he could have a ceremonious rejection after sideboard or something. But I'm still just gonna slam worm. With one mana up. Cracking now. Interesting. Paying life. And another Serum Visions. Interesting, interesting. I wonder if I play a Ballista now. Because he could have some bounce spells for Worm Coil, which makes it annoying. And this way, Walking Ballista, like, at least will kill a Delver. You know what? I like it for that reason, because he could have Vapor Snag. Just gonna Ballista for three. Somehow it let me pay 7 mana. Ah, just keep misclicking. I think it would have given me 1 mana back after casting it, but I'm not sure. So I just want to be safe. I just Ballista for 3. This can't be forced or countered. So it for sure is going to deal with this Delver. And I also play Expedition Map, which that can be forced, but I don't care. Pass the turn. I don't think I'm taking any more damage off this Delver regardless. I could have just killed it on my turn. But if he wants to bounce his own Delver, that's fine. That means our Worm Coil is going to stay around. He can't Arc Mage Charm a Walking Ballista either, because I can just shoot in response and have and have it go to the graveyard before Charm resolves. Arc Mage Charm can uh, three blue mana can gain control of target. Uh, Non-land permanent, I think, with converted cost one or less, or maybe creature. Archmage Charm is a pretty sick tech against uh, Batter Skull because you can just gain control of the germ and the Batter Skull stays attached to it. Blood Moon. Okay. That's pretty good. We can't cast this Karn now, unfortunately, but we can get Forest and then cast Ancient Stirrings. Blast Zone doesn't work. I can get, I can just get Expedition Map and play it. That will get me another land. Let's do it. We can just start warm coiling and get to Karn the hard way. Let's play map. Hit for one. I can't F6 because he could just charm this Walking Ballista at any time. Could have also just put a counter on Walking Ballista there. But I like just trying to draw more lands. We also have two uh, Nature's Claims in the deck. Alright, shoot him. Oh, there's Nature's Claim. Okay, so now... I mean, I guess this could get countered. Maybe I don't want to, like, just run it out. Wait for him to do something else. I kind of like that. <laughs> Just not rushing it. I feel like he's going to have to play like a threat that costs more mana at some point. Um, 
guess I'm just getting tower. Could also get sanctum. I think tower just like gives away what we're doing even less. Just play star and pass the turn. Just wait for an opportunity to play this nature's claim. And I think it's right now. Because if he had like a deprive or something, he obviously would have countered this claim, but I'd rather try to just get it down while I can. And now even if he opts into another blood moon, one more land and I can just hard cast this worm coil anyway, so I like that line of waiting to claim rather I if I just like claim on my turn, just go claim Karn, of course I win, but um if he if I just go claim and he just goes deprive claim, I'm just like, okay, now I'm screwed. Okay. Expedition map's actually good. Because I'm gonna play it. I'm going to crack it. I'm going to get Sanctum. And then I'm going to play Karn. Uh, let's see. How do I want to tap? Do I want to tap the forest? I'll just leave one floating. Whatever. Karn. Trigger Sanctum. At the end of like, on day two of a GP, I think I was out of contention for top eight, but I missed a Sanctum trigger. I just cast Karn, and then it was like Karn minus, and then I was like, oh, trigger Sanctum, and my opponent was like, oh, you missed it. So you got to remember to to trigger that. But Magic Online doesn't allow you to forget. So I'm gonna get Ulamog, because even if he casts Blood Moon, then I can just uh, still cast Worm Coil with one more land. Disdainful stroke, sure. Just gonna pass the turn. Not gonna even crack this star. That's the first Delver trigger he's missed. And I'm just gonna cast Ulamog. Spire Bluff, pass, okay. I think this should be game. Cast Ulamog. I don't think I even care about Delver. I'm just going to hit both of his red sources. I'd rather just take him down on mana. Just makes him harder for him to like, Archmage Charm in the future. Deprive. Oh, wow. Bounce a land. I should have. I guess I couldn't really play around that. That was such a good deprive. That's like, that's the best deprive I've ever seen. <laughs> Counter Earl Mug and save one of my lands. Gotta give my opponents props on that one. Now it's looking like I should have killed the Delver. Wow. Maybe hitting land land was greedy there, but we'll see. Ooh, there's Walking Ballista. Um, I think I like just playing a leading on Oblivion Stone. If he counters it, then I can play Ballista or Worm Coil. And if he doesn't counter it, then I can just pass the turn. Another Deprive. Okay. So now I just Ballista for x equals 4 and he has to have ceremonious rejection here and I think I'm just gonna kill Delver now pass the turn he, that allows him to be able to bolt this ballista but I can't like play around that indefinitely snapcaster bolt Sure, I can kill Snap and deal him one damage and then slam a worm. So he's still in a lot of trouble. And I still have this card sitting around from Star. Well, 
Bolt Ballista. Shoot that. And then shoot him. Let's add a green with this and draw. Maybe we draw into like Karn or something. No, we don't. It's fine though. Still just slam worm, pass. Now he has to like bounce this worm and then also be able to counter it. He just concedes to it. Okay. So we're on the draw. Let's hope he does not go T1 Delver flip again. And I think I want the third nature's claim. Uh, yeah, I think I do. Especially now that he's shown Blood Moon. Hmm. Maybe take out one Ugin as well. I'd rather just have, like again, all these other threats. Lumog, Ballista, Karn, Worm. I think those are our best threats. So let's just load up on those and cut some of the other. Like It's hard to cut stuff with Tron. Like, sometimes I like cutting a Sphere or even an Ancient Stirring sometimes. Like I cut one Scrying. But it can be tough. It can be tough to make cuts when you're bringing cards in from the board. Alright, game three against Delver. He snapped cut seven, and uh, we got him all this hand, I think. Let's think about this. We have tower, map, sphere, and that's it. We gotta do better than that. Hmm. I just don't really like this either. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this. Mulligan to five or keep these six. I'm gonna keep. Put back a forest. Just sucks to have to lead on forest. I might even just lead on Tromland and not cast stirrings. We'll, we'll see. It's scary also that he just snap capped. He doesn't have Delver yet though. All right, I'm just gonna go stirrings here. Just resign myself to the turn four Tron. And there's oh, I was gonna say there's mine, but it's not what we need. So I think in this case I could take Ballista, because then if he draws a Delver or a Walking Ballista I can just kill it. I was gonna say I can take Chromatic Sphere to draw a card. I can also take O Stone. Don't want to. I was originally gonna take Mine just to have another land. I don't think that's right. So I think it's between Ballista, O Stone, and Sphere. And he could easily have Young Pyromancer. In which case, Ballista would be best. If he doesn't, I still get to run it out. So I'm going to take Ballista. I like that the best. Just put these in any order. I'll most likely be shuffling my library anyway. At some point this game. Now he just might not even run out Young Pyromancer, and then I might just not even play Ballista either. Tarn Pass, I'm feeling like. No? Is he running out Ballista? I mean,. Pyro? He does. Yeah, so taking that Ballista was a pretty sick call. I'm just going to play it and kill this. Use it as a removal spell. Pass. He has Charm here, I think. Let's just run out Star. Crack for green, draw, then play mine. All right, we got to hit Tron somehow. Is this like a brazen bar or no, just a charm? So he did have charm that turn. Yeah, this card's sweet because you can just leave up counterspell and then if you don't need to cast it, you can just draw two cards. Young Pyromancer, Veil of Summer. I mean, if I just hit Tron here, it'll be sick. We're under the pressure of a Young Pyromancer, which isn't that much yet, but it'll scale pretty quick. I 
if you cast a blue spell, I can potentially cycle this veil, but I don't even really want to. He's going to put charm back on top. That's fine. Mystic Sanctuary is such a broken card, too. We just get hit for two. And then you probably... Oh, Blood Moon. Okay. Brutal. And there's the map. Alright. Just going to play map. If he goes to counter it, I probably would have just bailed. Hmm. I kind of even need a second green here. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm close to like even having Wormcoil with Veil back up. I'll just crack for Tower. Play Tower. Pass the turn. So he does have triple blue, so he has an Archmage Charm in hand. We know that. But again, we're not under that much pressure yet. So I don't think I'm even going to slam Worm. There's the Stirrings. I'm just going to play that. Encounter that if he wants. Ooh, Karn the Great Creator. Maybe I just... I can either take a Chromatic Sphere to draw a random card, or I can take a card in the Great Creator and not play it. What is Karn really doing for us? Hmm. I think I'm just going to take a Sphere. Play Sphere. I'm going to actually crack it now. Another worm. Pass the turn. Now any land is like such a sick draw for us. Okay, he draws two cards. It's fine. Thing is, he only has triple blue now. So it's likely he could have another Archmage Charm or Cryptic Command. So if we draw a land then we can just for sure resolve this worm because he's not going to be able to have double counter up because he doesn't have that many blue sources thanks to Blood Moon. So if we draw land here, I think we're actually in pretty decent shape. We are at 9. Land. Oh, Chromatic Star, that's so bad. Just going to crack it now. We might just be dead to like some snap bolts here. Chromatic Sphere. Let's just draw through our deck. There's Stirrings. He might try to counter this. I'll Veil if he does. Alright, I think I just need to take Blast Zone and hope we're not dead. There's nothing else I can do. Pass. Yeah, so Snapcaster Bolt, does that kill us? It brings us down to 6, and then we get hit for 7. So that, that kills us. Gigi's opponent. Got us with the Blood Moon. Good game, and uh, I'll see you in round 4. All right, welcome to round four. We're against Witch King here, and uh, it just feels so bad to mulligan these two Tron land hands, but, you know, I think I'm going to. Like, we have an Olamog and an Ugin, which aren't even T3 threats. All we have is to draw one card with Chromatic Sphere. Like, we're pretty far away from Tron, actually. I'm going to mulligan. <sighs> Got a mulligan again. This is This doesn't work. That was a close one, I'll admit that's 7, but 
I think with the London Mulligan rule, you you want to just mulligan so aggressively. Like I've won so many games on Molson four, so he kept six. We're gonna go to five. We're just gonna go down down to four. This is just double power plant. Now I'll keep this four, and we want to keep these four cards and just try to hit Tron here. Probably going to lead on power plant map. Misty, is this going to be a thought seize effect? No, this is an Oko deck. Okay, yeah, this is Urza. There's a Chromatic Sphere. I think I'm actually going to play that over a map. Because you want to actually Stirrings first. If I go T2 Stirrings and hit another Tron piece, then I can map for the third one. But if I map, if I hit like, if I map first and then just have to play Forest and get a random Tron piece, it's harder to Stirrings into the last one. But map lets you choose whichever one you want. Yeah, okay, this is definitely Urza. He's down to three cards in hand. Let's draw a card. There's tower. Okay, that doesn't change anything. Still gonna stirrings. I think I take Karn. And then play map. I can't even Karn next turn, but I still think I do it. Could have taken Olamog, but then I would have had to hit another tower to be able to play it. So this looks like it's going to be a T4 Karn. Unless I not draw the last piece. Make a Thopter, so we must have another Mox Opal. That's fine. Does he have a, another land for an Urza here? Looks like yes. No, Chalice on one, okay. Doesn't do anything since we already have this map down. He's down to one card in hand. Sylvan Scrying as well. Um, I think I want to just play... Debate if I play Forest or Blast Zone. Could also just crack map now and get the last Tron piece and play it and pass. That disguises our information the best. I think I just want to play Blast Zone and pass. And then end of turn, crack map for mine. Does, is this last card another Mox Opal, or is he just trying to get some pressure going? And sacks the Chalice. Yeah, he's just trying to kill us with a couple Thopters. Don't think that's going to work either, but we'll see. Have to crack map to get mine here. Yeah, third Mox Opal, sure. There's an Oko. Alright, that's actually good. So he creates a food. That might have been a mistake. He might have might might have wanted to make a 3-3 there. So I get mine. He has zero cards in hand. But I may have to go... Oh, wow. Ballista. I can Ballista for four. This is really interesting. Exchange control of target artifact or creature you control with target creature with power three or less. Uh, it's kind of weird if I play Karn and Plus. So I have to go mine. I can mine and just play Ballista for four. That allows them to make more Thopters with Oko. If I just cash in the Karn to trade with Oko, 
is that worth? That leaves him with nothing in hand. And then me just being able to play a huge ballista. All right, I'm going to do that. That's that's a pretty close call too, but I'm just gonna kill the Oko. Then he can like sack his food to make another Thopter, but then I can just Ballista on four, and then I can just start putting counters on the Ballista after that, pretty freely, because he has a lot of bad draws in his deck now. His draw wasn't that great. He kept the food around. Do you draw another Oko? Chalice, okay, sure. Okay, now we can just put Lister for five. I could have played Forest and gotten Sanctum and then the list of next turn cracking Sanctum, but I think this is good gonna be good enough. Bobble. Okay, that doesn't draw a card till our our turn. And if he attacks for three, I'm just gonna take it all and just start swinging back. I think. Uh, yeah, he just concedes to the big ballista. Okay. Uh, we were drawing a mug. Okay, didn't didn't matter. Could have killed two lands there. All right, claims and veil of summers, I think, coming in. The usual. Um. Again, what do we not want? I guess Ugin is bad. A lot of his things are colorless. Walking ballista is actually a little bit awkward as well. I think my other things are better than Ballista. Like Karn I think is better, Worm. Maybe Worm is a little awkward. Cause it just like is so bad against Oko. Maybe I just take out two worms actually. Oh wait, I have to take out three cards. Maybe just cut a bunch of worms. Definitely want these O stones, definitely want everything else. Worm just does seem bad against Oko and like just their plan in general. Let's try it like this. I like that most of our opponents have been playing pretty fast. We have a Veil of Summer, but we only have double forest, so I'm in a mulligan. Just like these seven card hands with zero trauma lands, I just think like you basically cannot keep. Like you are trying to find those twelve cards in your deck. Urzos, Mine, Power Plant, and Tower. Like, it's exactly what you need. Like, oh, I can play a, a map and then crack it and then play a star and leave up Veil of Summer, whatever. But it's like, that's not how you win games with this deck. You need to just, like, play Tron Land, Tron Land, Tron Land, or, like, at least be able to T4 Tron. This is, like, not going to Tron anytime soon. This is going to be another Mulligan as well. Our opponent mulligan to six. They actually need to keep like six card hands. They need like a quantity of resources. We we just need to find the right pieces. Mm, this is bad, but on five I could consider keeping it. Because I have a T1 chromatic sphere off of mine, and then a T2 scrying. We're on five, or do I go down to four? I'm going to keep, put back a ghost quarter, and I think I want to keep all the lands, just have more lands. Maybe I put back O-Stone, ghost quarter. Feels bad to put back O-Stone, though. I could put back ghost quarter mine. All right, let's do that. At least this way I can just play a T3 O-Stone. I mean, this five is not very good, but 
do you always want to go to four? No. So keep this on the draw. It goes Bobble, Misty, probably Bobbles himself. Yep, he Bobbles himself. He doesn't like it. He cracks Misty. And then maybe plays like a Gilded Goose or something. Just doesn't play anything. Interesting. Okay. Draw. Forest was just a terrible draw. Play Sphere and pass. Some people say, like, should I wait on this scrying? Can I draw, like, one of the other two charm lands? And my answer is no, uh, for this reason. Because if I play scrying on T2 and then get, like, let's say a power plant, then my outs for finding the last Tron piece are just naturally drawing tower or drawing another scrying or another map. But if I don't play scrying, then my outs, like, become significantly less. So um, I, I just think it's it's just... Better to, to cast it while you can. Wow, bunch of Veil of Summers. I'm still just going to cast Scrying here. While he's tapped out and get a power plant. Oh, these Veil of Summers just get countered by Chalice. So they're actually not good here. Wasn't even really paying attention to what our opponent was doing. I was just talking about whether I should Scrying or not. What is this? A Thoughtseize that gets countered by his own Chalice. Sweet. We know he brought in Thoughtseize. Damping Sphere. Okay, it's fine. I mean, I'm just going to run out this O-Stone here. Oh, nice. That's huge. Now I can just crack O-Stone next turn and have some Veils up. Wow, that was... I mean, Tower obviously was our best draw possible. Just finish off Tron. Thopter Foundry. Okay, I mean... That's just going to get O-Stoned away. I guess Damning Sphere stops it for now. So I'm just going to run out mine and pretend like I don't have Patron. And then plan on uh, O-Stoning next turn. Because if he makes 1-1s, one -ones, that doesn't work. Ensnaring Ridge? Sure. People bring this in against Tron, and I think it's 100% wrong. Like, again, Tron does not need to attack or deal you damage to win the game. So, yeah, this could save you, like, in weird scenarios if I, like, play a Worm Coil or something, but it's just it's just not good. I just like to put a Fake Counter on itself. I know it's mostly irrelevant. Ooh, there's a Claim as well. I mean, that gets countered by Chalice right now. But this O-Stone is where we want to be. I'm just going to play Tower now, pass. And now he's should be scared because O-Stone is going to kill four of his permanents and leave him with two cards in hand. What? Oh, he's playing Karn because then I can't activate O-Stone. Alright, I mean, that's good. I have, to, I have to sack it now. It's interesting because now he can't sack any of those. I mean, I guess making Thopters doesn't do anything. So any threat, please. He should probably minus Karn here for sure. Like, why would he consider? Why would he plus? He's probably just thinking about what he wants to get. Oh, he pluses. Okay. Uh, maybe he plus to somehow play around Ballista, but we have claim with Veil of Summer up, so. We're actually safe against most things he could card for. Urza. I mean, that is definitely annoying. I might even just cycle one of the Veil of Summers here. He minus his card now. Okay. He's getting a zero drop. Tormod's Crypt. Sure. Why is he getting Tormod script? It's gonna 
Oh, for Emery. Okay. It's fine. Mill some cards. I'm going to cycle one of the veils at least. He has zero cards in hand. Might even cycle both of them. There's tower, because we need to draw a threat here. I mean, he can't counter anything, and I need to draw a threat, so I'm going to cycle Veil. Star, I guess that's another redraw. And there's a Karn. Okay. Problem is he has so many threats I need to answer. I just lead on star here, I suppose. Oh, it can't be activated, duh. Okay. So if I Karn minus kill his Karn, what happens? Then he gets to Emery. He can Emery back either a Thopter Foundry or a Chalice or a Damping Sphere and kill our Karn. What happens if I Karn? I can Karn minus on Emery and then I lose my Karn and he still has his Karn. If I Karn plus. Oh no, no. Okay, this is what I do. I Karn. I Karn minus on his Karn, and then just leave up Claim. I guess I can also just crack our Chromatic Star now. I think I'm going to. Could also use Nature's Claim now, but I don't think I want to. Play map, and then pass the turn. I don't think there's any reason to map now. I've already played a land, right? Yeah, I've already played a land. I don't want to show him Nature's Claim yet because I think I can use it to save my Karn. Let's see what he even Emery's here. Definitely want to save my Karn Liberated. So he's getting back Thopter Foundry. Okay. He plays it. So I can kill Karn, this Karnstruct in response. Which I'm going to do. Because that protects my Karn. And killing the Thopter Foundry I don't think really does much. Oh, we can add a Blue Mana? Sure. Wait, no, I don't want F6. I, because uh, I want to crack this map for most likely a Sanctum. Maybe a Blast Zone? Oh, he drew Whir for Sword of the Meek. And then he gets to go Infinite. Yeah, so he gets to go infinite now because I used the claim. Didn't think he would top deck a uh, Wurra there, but I'm just going to get a Sanctum, I suppose, an F6. I'm just going to let him do his thing. I'll show you guys kind of what he does. He can Now he can just like make infinite mana and like activate Urza as many times as he want as he wants. Um I could concede to it, but it's possible that I mean this kinda takes a long time for what he's trying to do, and it's possible that I can just like top deck an oblivion zone or something and that he won't uh, have an out to it. So I just need to wait I think.
because on Magic Online you can't just say gain infinite, make infinite mana. You have to like do each action. Chalice of the Void, sure. I can't just concede here, unfortunately, because of the combo. But you're kind of seeing what he's doing. So he's tapping Thopters and tapping Sword of the Meek to make blue mana, and then he's sacking Sword, which makes a Thopter, and then it brings back Sword. So he's gaining mana and Thopters and life. But if I top deck specifically um, Oblivion Stone, then I can win. Obviously claiming the construct was bad there, but I chose to do it. I think uh, I'm just going to let him keep comboing off here, and I'll just uh, pause the recording, and then I'll just come back when he's uh, done something irrelevant. So he's just going to keep making Thopters here keep activating Urza and uh, I'll come back just so this doesn't take 10 minutes and when he like maybe hits something wrong with it, like maybe he has a spine of Bishar or just something else but I don't think he can uh, it's gonna take a while before he does something relevant so I'll just pause for now all right looks like our opponent eventually found Pithing Needle after making all these Thopters, named Oblivion Stone, and now is attacking Karn. And uh, he's satisfied with that. So we need to drop Ugin now. Walking Ballista. Our opponent's at 50, and they have 30 guys, and we can Ballista for how many? Wait, we might be able to Ballista for Ugin and then get and then cast Ugin as well. You oh no. This only searches for colorless creatures. Okay, okay. Hmm. So we needed to hit uh, Ugin there, I think. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 mana. So we can only Ballista for 7. That's not enough. So I think we're just dead. Is there anything we can Sanctum for that saves us? No. Okay. Our opponent got that one on the top deck, War of Invention. Obviously, Great Creator is just like insane. Shuts down a lot of his artifacts. It's where we want to be. I think this matchup is pretty decent for us. We could side in some of this Graveyard Hate. Like a relic, I guess, but I think I like having it in the board to relic for it, if that's the scenario that we're in. Yeah, Worm Coil still seems pretty bad. Let's just let's just run it. I didn't really like want to have to make our opponent combo, but I also just had to had to play it out because we had outs. Um, this is not gonna do it. We got a mulligan. We're just like not hitting good sevens. Wow, zero lands. Yeah. Okay. Well, this one we're gonna keep. So I need to put two cards on the bottom. Probably gonna put back a power plant and a veil as much as I want to keep veil. Yeah. Do that, and then we'll just go mine, star, go. I want to keep the O-Stone. I think O-Stone is very good against him. Hopefully we just hit on this scrying here. So then Astrolabe. Yep. No T1 Emery, please. Thinking like, do I want to play out my zero drop? 
or do I want to wait? He plays it out. He's going to chalice for zero. Does he have something else? Thoughtseize? Wow. Yeah, that deck's really good. He's probably just going to take stirrings here. Although, he could be scared of O Stone with our hand. I mean, we mulliganed a ton. It's kind of what we signed up for. So he takes our stirrings. That was kind of expected. That was definitely the correct take. We draw tower. Karn. I think I wait one turn on cracking this star. Just pass the turn. Yeah, he was deciding if he wanted to play out the chalice or save it and play it for chalice equals x equals one. The T1 Astrolabe, Mox Opal, Chalice, Thoughtseize. Thopter Foundry, sure. Passing the turn. All right, we need to crack, add green. Stirrings, let's play it. Complete with. We needed to hit a land. The star. It's pretty awful there. If our opponent doesn't have a sword or a way to find it. Looks like they don't, because why would they be doing this? I guess just that's just a good play, but this it was like a sword. Chalice on one. Alright, that's good. Another Mox Opal. That was probably a mistake because he should have made another Thopter. This Karn the Great Creator can still get there. Oh, there's a claim. Oh, which just gets countered. Trophy on power plant. Alright, well, I'm going to float a mana. It's during my draw step. Not sure if floating a mana matters. Use the ability, yes. Get a basic. Now, I have the choice of do I want to crack sphere now and just get a. Nature's claim countered. The reason I'm thinking about doing this is then Karn for Bridge later will be, be will be better. Uh, it feels pretty bad though. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna draw or no, I already drew. I'm just gonna go to my main phase. I will draw with this sphere though. Green. There's a land. It's huge. So I can play O Stone, pass a turn. Now I just need to draw land, land basically. All right. Well, he has the combo, so we can start making Thopters, and we can't claim the sword. All right. Well, Karn actually stops the combo because he can't activate this. So we we may be all right. So we can make one more Thopter. And it unfortunately is a 2-3. Hmm. So yeah, playing these out of my hand may have been better because now um, an ensnaring bridge may, may not save me. So nothing else of his can be activated. So if I Karn plus on O stone, I can swing. Let's see. 
I can also car and minus get a Tormod script. But that doesn't seem right. But I think I definitely need to plus. So I might as well plus on my O stone, I think. And hit for three. Okay, I think I'm in this game because he can attack Karn for three. That's all he can do. And then I can just O-stone his board away if I draw land. So I just need to draw land. And I have two chances before he can activate any artifacts. So I can plus Karn again. Another sword. Interesting that he played that out. Oh, another Karn. Wow, another Karn is, I feel like it's good. Let's see. So I can, I can Karn plus, and then I can plan on putting a Fate Counter on Karn with O-Stone. I kind of like that because then on the next turn I can just play another Karn. I think I just go plus Karn, no targets. Yeah, let's do this. Because then if I draw land on my next turn, this is insane. Don't, still not playing these one drops out. Another Karn was such a good draw. Yeah, so he hits Karn down to one. I put a fate counter on this Karn. Now if I draw a land, I get to O-Stone and keep this Karn. Sylvan Scrying for Tron, that does it. Sylvan Scrying. Let's not misclick here. Got to get power plant, and he conceded. It says it in the text. All right, we got the match. Karn the Great Creator. Like I said, this is where you want to be in this matchup. Just having a stony silence one-sided is just absolutely insane. It's why they started playing Karn the Great Creator in the main deck for the mirror match, because it was so insane against this deck. All right, so we're 3-1. and one. We beat the best deck in the format in Urza, and uh, let's see if we can 4-1 this. All right, three and one with Mono Green Tron in this league, and we finally have a seven we can keep. Would you, could you believe that? We have a seven we can keep. Um, it's funny because each time you log in, you're like just as, you're even more likely to keep on the sevens because you have more resources. But we've just been mulling to five all the time. But we're gonna keep the seven, and we're gonna T three Karn Liberated if we can. This is a great hand here, Sacred Foundry. Untapped. Are we against Burn? I would not be too surprised. This hand has a shot against Burn, especially with no Gobble Guide. Mana Tithe. Oh man. Mana Tithe in the 3-1 bracket. What are we against? What is this? I was not playing around the Mana Tithe. I thought we were just up against Burn. Simeon Spirit Guide. Blood Moon. Trinisphere. Okay, we're up against Red White Prison. We can't play anything because of Trinisphere. I think this is a good matchup for us, though. Problem is, he has Blood Moons, I'm sure. Stone Rain. Okay, it's not what I was expecting. Can't cast anything. It's likely our opponent can't do anything either, though. Rabble Master. Another pillage. Jeez, they're going deep. I'm just going to keep playing because they might not be able to do anything. I'm just going to discard a 10 drop when we have zero lands out. I'll, I'll keep showing him the deck. I mean, he knows we're mono green Tron at this point. Is this is Chandra or something. Rekindling Phoenix. Wow, opponent really going deep here. 
We have a five turn clock. If we rip land land, I think we have a chance. Oh, just boomed. Sure. All right, where our opponent got us. This actually is not a good matchup for us. I th I thought it was, but he's just this weird red white prison land destruction deck, and he got paired against Tron in the last round. So this is looking rough here. Do I even want claim? I I, I need it because he probably has Blood Moon. He might not even have Blood Moon, but he probably has Chalice. Out. Oh, I guess claim doesn't even answer Chalice. How could he not have Blood Moon? But even if he does, is this where I want to be? I think I just need the claims. Maybe I'll just bring in two because of Chalice as well. Just sucks bringing in a one drop in this instance. Alright, what do we not want? Probably Ugin. Walking Ballista, maybe even just take out all those. Yeah, let's go with this. This is not exactly the matchup I wanted to see in the last round. Uh, we had a T3 Karn and we just got totally wrecked. I mean, by Mana Type and by Stone Reeds. We're going to Mulligan. This doesn't do anything. And he kept 7. That's so bad for us. I think I actually need to keep this because this hand has four lands in it. And I'm going to slow roll these Tron lands, I think, even. As weird as that sounds. I'm going to keep and just bottom a Ballista, I think. And then I'm just going to slow roll my lands. It seems weird, but I think I'm going to play Forest next turn, too. I mean, he can wait and then stone right in a Tron land. I'm not even going to Ballista for one. I'll just pass the turn. If he goes like Simeon Spirit Guide, kill Forest, I'd rather have Sphere around. I'm just going to play around Mana Tithe. Temple. Sure. If we like draw a literal mine right now, that'd be bad for us, but I'm just gonna play a ballista on one. Yeah, I'm not about to get mana tithe again. Now if he goes like stone rain power plant, that's fine. You can just play another one. Or even just play tower. Looks like that's what's happening. Molten Rain, sure. We take two. There's another, there's a star. Alright, now let's crack for green, draw. Olamog, it's horrible. Let's go play star. I think I'm going to crack for green now. Draw. Yeah, because if I drew another one drop there, I would have wanted to play it. But we can't use the mana right now. Attack for one. Pass the turn. Another stone rain effect would be brutal for us. Yep, another molten rain. So he's just mono land destruction. Rekindling Phoenix is weird in his deck though. I'm not sure why he has that. We get to run out an Oblivion Stone that we can probably not activate. But at least, I mean, I, I kept a four land hand for a reason. O Stone, is this going to get Mana Tithe? 
Looks like he definitely has one in hand. He's decided if he wants to mana type it or not. Looks like he does. All right, that may allow us to resolve Karn. I laid around mana type for as long as I could, but I needed to jam O-Stone because I want to try to jam Karn next turn. Flagstones this is a boom bust here. Yep. It's pretty bad. And he has a threat as well. Oh, just a transfer. Okay. He's down to two cards. We can play an Ancient Stirrings, hopefully hit land. We do. So I, I'd rather take Tower because I've already uh, used one of those. So it's easier to find mine. Attack with Ballista. Hopefully he's out of land destruction now. He's already played three LD spells. Hopefully he just has like lands in hand or another Trinosphere or the like. He draws, okay. No land destruction here, please. And I can go Karn. Vanishing Light, targeting the Ballista. Okay, I can just shoot him down to 10. Because if I remove Vanishing Light eventually, then just it comes back as a 0-0, zero, zero, so it doesn't work. I'm also just a top deck mine away from Troning. Play Karn. Do I want to plus it or minus it? Because I could minus it now. Getting like, I could also even just get Mystic Forge. Does this allow me to play lands? If it's a Carlos non land card, it's not very good against Trinosphere. I could minus right now, get liquid metal coating. I feel like that's correct because then next turn I can play liquid metal coating, tap it, and kill one of his lands, start killing his lands. Yes. But we have a, even have a walking ballista in the board. I could just get walking ballista. That's pretty close. I mean, playing a Ballista for two next turn seems pretty good. He's at 10. It kills him pretty fast, actually. I'm just going to do it. I forgot that we put a Ballista in the board. It's actually pretty nice. Now he needs to top deck probably another land destruction spell. Cascading Cataract, does he have? He must have a <laughs> Golos. Vanishing Light the Karn. Sure. We get to play a Ballista on two. And he has to have an answer for this Ballista here. Vantage. Rekindling Phoenix. Okay. Expedition map. Definitely gonna play that. He has one card in hand. Because next turn we can get Tron play Worm Coil. So no land destruction spell here. He's gonna try to find it. Cascading Cataracts Golos? Is this is it Golos? It must be. Maybe he has something else? I mean, this just, yeah, again, seems like a really rough matchup for us, but. Wow, he's attacking. That's bold. Doesn't play a spell. We just nat draw the mine. That's awesome. Seven, eight, nine mana. So we're one away from uh, casting the Ulamog. Do I want to just crack map 
get mine and then play it to disguise that I have another mine. Um, I think. Oh, wait, let's see. We have seven, eight, nine mana. So I can activate Ballista twice. So I can't quite kill him this turn. So I definitely want to play Worm Coil. So yeah, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to crack map. Get a mine. Play it. Attack for two. Then play a Worm Coil. And then next turn I can just play Olamog if I if I want. Or just activate Ballista a bunch. Alright, he's got another draw. I mean Sunbite Canyon is huge in his deck. Just being a land and a draw spell. So assuming we go to the last game, just gonna again look for hands with a lot of lands because yeah, he played three land destruction spells, but we just kept finding lands eventually. Pillage the power planet. Wow, that's a bold call, which turns out to be right, but I mean, he still has to chump this worm coil. I guess cracking mine was wrong, because if I leave it around, then I can just get the last Tron piece. Uh... Could go shoot. Yeah, yeah. I, I just have to attack with Worm here. And then he's going to block, and I'm going to shoot. And I'm going to ping the token now. Then I'll just level this now. Pass the turn. I mean, I guess you could draw Ensnaring Bridge here or something. We can't play Star because of Trinosphere. Alright, he concedes. Whew! Got there against Red White Land Destruction. Multiple Banishing Mites. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I want anything else. I don't want to put a Worm Coil in the board for Karn. I, I liked that we sided out the one Ballista. I just sided out just because, but I didn't really think about Karn going to get it, but it turned out to be key. Instrumental, actually. Because I could, like, side out Ulamog to bring, out, bring back in the last Ballista, which might just be better. Probably should have thought about siding out one Ulamog before, just because it costs 10 mana. But if we get into a weird game state, casting Ulamog can deal with some of his random permanents. I'm just going to run it back. Fine with it like this. Ugh. Can't keep. Wow, he just keeps keeping seven land hands, seven card hands. I feel like that deck is pretty inconsistent. All right, we have double scrying with different art. It's gross. Um, why do we even have that? Let's see. I just can't keep a one land hand. I just got a mulligan. Oh god. We're just gonna lose. This is so whack. All right, we just we just lose here. Oh man, it's brutal. Just gonna keep all lands. That sucks. Had our worst mulligan in the last round. See if he kept a bad seven. Hmm. 
wonder if I want to just stirrings here. I think that's the best play. Plays around Chalice the best, I think. Uh, of course we hit mine. If I take map and he goes... I don't even know if he has Chalice. Did we see it? The games are kind of blending together. I think I'm going to take it and just hope he doesn't have Chalice. Is he going to go Chalice on one now? Or is he going to Mana type? Or at least try to? Map. I'm going to not get Mantithe here. At least not get my map Mantithe is what I meant. Yeah, you can Mantithe that. Okay. Maybe I just need to play around Mantithe even harder, but just with my draws have been bad, so it's kind of tough to just play around anything. I just kind of need to jam. I mean, I'd be shocked if he doesn't have a land destruction spell here. Yep. Land. Nice. Alright, gonna pass the turn. This deck just seems bad to me. Good in this matchup, but seems pretty bad. Boom. Alright. Just crack map. Get another tower, I suppose. Guess I'll get mine. Hopefully he just runs out of gas again, because it seems like what that deck typically does. Alright. I'm going to play map, but I'm not going to play star into man type this time. Need to play around another mana tithe. Does he have another land destruction spell? Uh, Banishing Light the map, that's bad. Alright. There's land. I'm going to crack star now. Probably shouldn't have played the land first. There's stirrings. All right, I need to take it. The, need to take the tower. Tron doesn't have that many actual lands, but it has so many like other cards that get lands, like Map, Ancient Stirring, Sylvan Scrying. So it has like a lot of cards that just get lands. So like a lot of your cards are mana sources. So even though we don't have that many actual lands, we have a lot of mana sources against a deck that's just trying to stone drain us. Okay. All right. Bow stone, let's go. We have another mana tithe. Yep. I mean, I understand why mana tithe's in the deck because he's killing so many of your lands. He also kept seven card hands every time. And we just. Kept a three land hand, three card hand here. Sure, Trinosphere. Ooh, there's Claim. I like that. If I can claim. Oh, no, no, no. I was going to say I can claim the Banishing Light now. But I actually don't. Hmm. I actually do want to. Um, because it plays around Mana Tithe. Doesn't play around like a Braid, but. I thought I could go claim, crack map, play land, but because of Trimosphere, claim cost three. But I'm still in this game right now. Vanishing Light again. Okay. That's pretty funny. Because of second Vanishing Light, it would have been better to wait on the claim, but I'm not sure if it matters. 
suppression field, sure. This is like only threat rekindling Phoenix. It's just ballista on one. Had to pay one more for Trinisphere. I think that's how we, we need to cast it. You need to tap two and then press OK and then like pay one more for Trinisphere. If you try to pay three, I think it might get messed up. Maybe not, but Yep, we got our we got our threat. If we draw another land, we can start activating it. Sacred Foundry untapped. Play Rekindling Phoenix. Yep. Why Rekindling Phoenix and not like Chandra or something? I, I don't know. Ancient Strings get Blast Zone. For sure getting Blast Zone. Pass the turn. So he's winning this race at the moment. But we have four lands out. And activated abilities cost two more. So this costs two more. Okay, there's a Tron land. So I could put a counter on this. Which I think is better than putting a counter on Ballista. Because I don't think I'm really winning the race anyway. I'd rather start putting counters on Blast Zone. We have four turns on this Rekindling Phoenix before we die. Hopefully he doesn't have a second one. Pillage on the tower. I'll put a counter on Blast Zone. Need to draw another land here. Don't. All right, let's just put a counter on this. Oh, I can't because of suppression field. Vanishing light, huh? I mean, I think this matchup is horrible for us, but it still feels bad to lose to this deck. Yep. There's nothing we can do. We're not dead yet, but we're pretty much dead now. All right, let's cast it. I don't think we have any outs though. Feels bad, like I was saying. Couldn't get to six for this worm coil. GG's opponent. There's a map. Not in time, though. GG's. So we ended up 3-2. Pretty unexciting. I haven't really been, like, crushing the leagues, like, in the very recent past. It's just, like, I've just been doing, like, a lot of 3-2s in leagues. But... Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you like the list, uh, you know, throw me a subscribe. Helps me out. Um, thanks for watching. Until next time, thanks so much. It's YouTube.com slash Thanks.